Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to learn how to solve algebra word problems. Today we'll begin with problem number 69. Problem number 69, very straightforward, simple question. The question simply is what is the odd number? What is the odd number that comes that comes before 2n plus 1 before 2n plus 1 now if you recall if you've been watching these videos in the proper sequence and if you recall in problem number 55 Problem number 55, we learn we learn how to express the notion of an odd number and an even number in the language of algebra. In the language of algebra, how do we express the idea, the notion, the concept of an even number? In the language of algebra, if you want to express an even number, you say that n is some integer, any integer. Doesn't have to be n, could be x, it could be k, anything. It represents some integer, positive or negative, doesn't matter, it's a whole number. That's all you're going to say. It represents an integer. But we don't know what that integer is. And because of the fact we do not know what that integer is, for all we know, these numbers, if you look here, let like me see there on the blackboard, could be, could be even numbers or could be odd numbers. These are unknown quantities, that's the whole point. That's what makes algebra algebra. We're dealing with unknown quantities. We have no way of knowing whether these quantities n, k, and x are even or odd. Because we do not know whether they are even or odd, if you want to express the idea of an even number, you want to make sure that the quantity that you're going to represent is always going to be even, always, always, always even, regardless of whether this quantity turns out to be even or odd, is to multiply these quantities by 2. There you go. Voila. Now, these quantities are always going to be even. It doesn't matter whether n turns out to be odd or even, whether x is odd or even, whether k turns out to be odd or even, because even times even is even and odd times even is even. Now these quantities are always going to be even. So this is how we represent even numbers. How do we represent odd numbers? But if you want to represent odd numbers, if you want to represent the odd numbers, we know these are always going to be even quantities. So you take these quantities, 2n, 2x, 2k, you take these quantities and you simply add one to them. Because of the fact that we know that these are even quantities, if we add one to them, now we are forcing them to be odd numbers. They have to be odd numbers because now what we have here is some even quantity plus one. An even quantity plus one will always, always, always be an odd quantity. That's the starting point. Here we're being asked to find out what's the odd number that comes before. And see, that's how it's given to us. 2x plus one, that's how it's given to us. The one that's going to come before that is going to be two less than that. That's what it is. The one that comes before that What's the number, what's the odd number that comes before 2, 2x plus 1? It's just going to be 2x plus 1, this quantity, minus 2. And a positive 1 and a negative 2 is going to give us 2x minus 1. There you go. Again, this quantity is going to be odd quantity because 2 times x is an even number, even number minus 1, even number minus, an odd number is going to be odd number. Let me rewrite it. 2x minus 1. If the question was asking us what's the odd number that comes after this number, then it would have been simply 2x plus 1 plus 2, in which case the number that comes after it is 2x plus 3, which makes sense because if it's plus 1, you, you add 2 more to it, it's going to be 2, two I kept saying x in here, we have n, doesn't really, doesn't really matter what symbol it is, so it's 2n plus 3, that's the, that's, the, that's the odd number that's going to come after the 2n plus 1. Let's go to the next problem. Let's go to next problem. Next problem, we are being asked to re represent an idea, the notion of sum of three consecutive odd numbers. Three consecutive odd numbers. Question is, what's the sum of sum of three consecutive odd numbers of which the 
the middle the middle one is 2x plus 1. Well, if middle one is 2x plus 1 and we want 3 of them, 2x plus 1 comes right in the middle. What's going to be the one that comes after it? It's just going to be 2 more than that. It's going to be 2x plus 1 plus 2. And what about the one that comes before this guy? It's going to be 2 less than that. It's simply going to be 2x plus 1, 2x plus 1, and 2 less than that, minus 2. And that is your sum. You can give it a name if you like. You can you can give it a name, any name that you like. You can call it. You can call this some hippos, monkeys, bananas, whatever you want. Michael, Joseph, Josephine, whatever you like. I like to call it S. S because it represents the sum. Do you understand? Now we simply have to collect our like terms. 2x, 2x, 2x. That gives us six x's. Six x's. And now we have to take care of our number, which is where you have to slow down because you don't want to make a mistake. Oh, that's right there. I see. Actually, this is actually very simple. We see a negative 2, we see a negative 2, and way at the end here, positive 2, they're going to kill each other. That's it, we're done. And it's just going to be positive 1 and a positive 1, which is going to give us a positive 2. Oh, that was quite straightforward. Did I miss something? Oh, damn it, I missed something. See, I missed this one. I missed this one, which is why, you see, which is why, which is why we, are ver we verify our work. We always verify our work. That's how we catch our mistakes. Let's verify. Let's pretend that, that let's pretend that I had not caught that. Let's pretend that I had not caught that, and this is our answer. Let's verify. It. We're going to verify. It. So there are three. They're going to be three consecutive odd numbers. I'm going to make up three consecutive odd numbers. Three plus five plus seven. Three plus five is eight. Eight plus five is fifteen. So the sum of three consecutive odd number is fifteen. And remember, m represents five represents the middle number. This guy right here. It represents the middle number. Now this is going to be complicated here. We're going to have to put a number here. Let's plug in something for x here. This, in order for in order for this to be five, in order for the middle number to be five, x here represents what quantity? Can you tell? What would x have to be in order for two x plus one to be five? If two x plus one is five, which means two x has to be four and x has to be two. X has to be two. In this answer, x has to be two. And if we get 15 out of that answer, then we know the answer is going to be right. And you can clearly see that it's not going to give us 15. How do I know without any doing without doing any work that it's not going to give us 15? Because 6 times x, doesn't matter what x is, whether x is odd or even, some number times an even number will always be an even number. If x happens to be odd number, odd times even is even. x happens to be even number, even times even is even. This quantity, 6x, is an even quantity. 2 is an even quantity. When you add up to even quantities, the answer is going to be even. There is no way in hell we can get 15 out of that. That tells us right there this answer is wrong. It's going to give us 14. It's going to give us 14 because I missed that one, didn't I? It's 1 plus 1 plus 1, which is 3. I'm going to, we're going to finish this thing before we verify this thing. We already know it's the right answer because 2 times 6 is 12. 12 plus 3 is 15, which is correct. But we can't leave it like this. We have to simplify it. We have a 6 here and we have a 3 here. We have a common factor of 3. We have a common factor of 3. We have to take it out. After we take out 3 from here, let's do it down here. After we take out 3, we're left with 2x plus 1. And that's our final answer. And that's our final answer. 3 times 2x plus 1. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.